Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the inaugural induction ceremony into the brand new Minneapolis Sports Hall of Fame. My name is Jack Larzalier. A few of you know me, most of you don't because I've been gone for a long time, 50 some years. Um, and no, I haven't been in jail. I've just been gone. But I did grow up here. Started school, like a lot of you, in this very building. Down that hallway, where the end, a little kindergarten room. And each year you moved up the classroom. When you ran out of classrooms, they sent you up the street to the old junior high and high school. Old red brick, brick buildings. Um, I'm sure if I went through the crowd and asked everybody what happened to those buildings, everyone would say the same thing. Well, when they built a new school, they knocked them down. I might suggest that maybe, just maybe, those old buildings fell down on their own. That's how bad they were. So, that was after I was gone, so I never got to go to today's high school, and that's just my loss. Um, give me a minute here, I left something out in my car that I need to go get. In case you were wondering, it's still raining. Um, I should make a confession at this point. Like a lot of you, you grow up with certain fears. You outgrow most of them, but some you don't. There's one fear that I haven't outgrown yet, probably never will. That's the fear of speaking to a group of people, <laughs> like right now. So. So if you'll, with your indulgence, if I stutter and stammer a little bit, and um, if you cut me a wee bit of slack, we'll get through this. Now, for the next 50, 60 minutes, we're not going to have a lot of rules, but we will have one. And that's, I call it the stand up and wave rule. If you hear your name called, we'd like to see you stand and wave or give me some kind of a gesture so you can be acknowledged by the folks. Now that only applies to the first time you hear your name. Some names will be thrown around four, five, six times. You don't have to stand up every time unless you want to. If you want to stand up every time, go for it. If you like doing that and you want to stand up every time you hear anybody's name, you can do that too. Now, of course, that was said kind of tongue in cheek. Obviously, if you prefer not to stand up, you don't have to. But we hope that you will. Now, a few people I'd like to acknowledge. First of all, my bride of 53 years. She's put up with a lot for me over that period of time. And the last 12 months hasn't been any different. Her name is Deanna. We call her Dee. Her kids call her Mom. And her granddaughters call her Nana. Honey? Nice, nice wave, honey. We worked on that wave for three weeks. 
Okay, speaking of granddaughters, if I had 10 or 12, I wouldn't take the time, but I've only got two, so I'm going to real quickly introduce you to our oldest, Hayden. She is 17. She'll be a senior at Olathe South next year, and she is a three-time national champion show horse rider. She rides, she rides Morgans, the, the horses that raise their front legs up real high when they trot. Our youngest is Riley. Riley is a, will be an eighth grader at Chisholm Trail Middle School. She's into everything. Um, softball, softball, volleyball, drill team, cheerleading, I think. Um, and next to a few Morgans herself. She's also one of the world's newest teenagers, just turned 13 recently. <laughs> I'd also like to acknowledge Athletic Director Terry Meckle. Is he here? Terry, are you here? There he is. When I first decided to, to give this a try, the first person I went to was Terry. Told him my idea. He liked it. He ran it by the Board of Education. They gave us the green light. And we took off running. I'd like also to thank the school district for the financial assistance that they gave us to cover a lot of expenses that we had. It was not a high dollar enterprise, but there are expenses. And the school district stepped up, and I want to thank them for that. Also, I'd like to acknowledge a young man, I think he told me he was a class of 1970. He went, went away for a while, I guess, and came back about 15 years ago, and since then has been doing the simulcast and compiling notes and records and statistics. He now has an archive that would fill a small encyclopedia, or a whole set of them, maybe. That information it was invaluable to me. It saved me hundreds of hours of research and made my job pretty easy. Mr. Dale Leach. Dale. And I'd also like to thank our contributors and donors and advertisers. Um, as I said, USD 239, um, Minneapolis Messenger, very cheap owner, the Clinton, Pat Johns, donors. Um, uh, oh, I'm going from memory here. Uh, the Bennington State Bank, Mike Berkeley, chairman. Mike, how are you? And the and Martin. Glasgow. They've been in business, this is their 56th year, so they must be doing something right. They all bought advertising on the programs that you see going around, and we're grateful to them for that. Now, how does it all work? Well, I have a father and three uncles and an aunt all graduate from here 
back in the early days. They told me stories, lots of stories about our first two inductees. And then I remembered quite a bit of stuff during my years here. And then I had Dale's archives to work with. And I started going through, just writing down names. First time through, I had 37 names. Well, you can't induct 37 people at one time into the Hall of Fame. I mean, that's silly. Who wants to be one of 37? So I started trimming the list, got it down to 26, and then 18, and finally 12. I submitted those 12 to the voting committee, who I'll introduce in a minute. I asked them to vote for at least six, and no more than eight, and to rank them, one through six or seven or eight. And they did that, did a good job. The voting was fairly close. Um, eight individuals separated themselves slightly from the other four. And so those eight, we're gonna take in. We're not gonna throw the other four under the bus. They're, uh, they'll be on the ballot next year. So, I mean, we, now let me start over here. Um, those 12 nominees were not just the cream of the crop. They were the cream of the cream. I mean, goodness, we've got a NFL football player. We've got a Major League and World Series baseball player. We've got a heavily decorated Marine general. We've got a young man who was all state in basketball, valedictorian in his class, played big time college basketball, and later got a PhD. We have a Mr. Kansas basketball player only one player a year in the state gets that award. We have a parade All-American and a USA Today top 25 football player. And we have two track stars who combined went to six state track meets and harvested 22 medals. 12 of them gold. Now that's very talented group, and I, I, I could be wrong about this, but I don't think we're ever going to have another class with, with the, the depth and the talent of this one. I'd like to introduce some of the voting members. We went with 12 this year. Um, I think next year we'll hopefully be at 15 or 16 maybe 20 the year after, and I may cut it off there, I don't know, but the more voters, the more varied experiences you get, the more subjectivity you get. Now half of the voters, approximately half, are, were raised here in Minneapolis, the other half were not, that's kind of the way I wanted it. So, I can find my list here. First off is Athletic Director Terry Meckle of the high school. Terry, you don't have to stand up again if you don't want to. But, um, Terry from Silver Lake, I asked him if he was as famous as, as uh, yeah, I'm reminded of him, the basketball coach. Yeah, yeah. And he said, no, but nobody else in looking Silver Lake is either. So. He, um, he went to Fort Hayes, played baseball, and I think he said he's been here 20, 22 years. Just finished 19. Just finished 19. Okay. All right. Another voter, uh, a young man who 
grew up down the road in Tessic, led his high school basketball team to the state championship, and an undefeated season. I think they went 29 and 0. He then went to KU, walked on the basketball team, scrimmaged against some guy named Wilt Chamberlain, stayed long enough to get his law degree, then came home to help operate his family's banking business. Chairman of the board and CEO of Bennington State Bank, Mr. Mike Berkeley. Michael. You don't want to stand up? Okay. Another voting member went to school here about the fifth grade through eighth. Then he moved to Belleville. He uh, quarterbacked an undefeated football team in Belleville. Won several medals at the state track meet in the long jump and hurdles. Went on to Kansas State, played three years of varsity football. His senior year, he led K State in scoring and receiving. Then he coached for a while. Um, was with the NCAA for a period of time. Then he became commissioner of the Metro Conference, which at, at that time was Louisville, Memphis, Cincinnati, those schools. He finished his career as commissioner of the MIAA, which is the, is the Division II conference that we all know. Fort Hayes, Emporia State, Pitt State, Washburn, Northwest Missouri. And he still is a member of the MIAA Hall of Fame Committee, as well as ours. Mr. Ralph McPhillan. Ralph is not here today. He's, uh, he's in Belleville organizing classes. See, 55th reunion, I guess. Another voting me member um, was also a nominee this year, and he will be on the ballot again next year. A four sports star. He was one of my heroes growing up. He was three years ago. All area football player, good basketball player. Ran the sprints and through the hurdles and track. But baseball may have been his best sport. He doesn't agree with that, but that's, that's my opinion anyway. He hit some monster home runs in Junior Legion. Um, he could really punish your baseball. Anyway, he went to KU after playing the tailback in high school that they went, KU moved him to guard position, guard and linebacker. He played a couple of years and then injuries caught up with him. He went to the, to the service and came back, finished, got his degree, came home, took over his father's insurance business. Mr. Dick Todd. Are you here, Dick? Another voting member, a young man who was a starter on the legendary 59 basketball team that went into the state championship game undefeated. And they lost that game in overtime by one point. But he, in fact, he may be the only surviving member. I'm not sure about that. But he went on to Kansas State, got his degree, took a commission in the Navy, and spent 24 years in the Navy. Uh, retiring with the rank of commander. He got his master's degree along the way. Did, uh, was in and out of Vietnam two or three times, and I think he told me he commanded the Swift Boat at one time. Commander Eldon Smith, United States Navy, retired. Eldon? He promised me he was going to get here. Maybe the rain got him or something. Um, another voting member, a 
think he told me he was in the class of 94. They played basketball and football. Um, went on to Fort Hayes, I think. Got his degree. He's now an up and coming young banker in, in the Kansas City area. Mr. Mark McGavin. Mark, how are you here? Another voting member, an you know, old compadre of mine, I kid him sometimes about being 150 years old, but he says it's not a day over 120. Guys, I remember my grandfather showing me an old grainy black and white photograph, the first Pony Express rider that came through here. The photo showed him throwing a mailbag down to a kid standing in about two feet of mud. The kid, the teenager, looked a lot like my friend at the same age. But it probably wasn't him. Mr. Cliff Johns. <laughs> Can't stand up. Okay. Another voting member is a young man I've known since before he was born. The only way I could have done that was if he was my son, and he is. He's a, holds two engineering degrees from the University of Oklahoma. He's an avid OU fan and KC Royals fan. Now a executive with Sprint Corporation, Mr. Brent Larzalek, BJ. And his bride, Amy. Another young man who grew up in Goodland, and it was through his connection that we were able to find out a lot of information about our first inductee. He went to Fort Hayes State. He's now a technology or a software guru with a technology company, Mr. Oliver Nielsen. At 6'6", six, six, about 260, he looks like he should be playing tight end for somebody. And his bride, our daughter, Angie. And another young lady who couldn't be here today, she's organizing her class reunion in Glasgow. She graduated from KU with a journalism degree. Went on to Northern Illinois and worked in sports information. Then came back to her alma mater, KU, worked in sports information, and then moved eventually up into the athletic department in charge of compliance. And we all know how important compliance is. She's now an executive at Lawrence Memorial Hospital. Miss Janelle Martin. They were having their 35th reunion today, so she's up there. So, you can kind of see the quality of people. I'm proud of them. Um, I've known most of them a long time, and I, I really trust their integrity. I hope we can continue to get people like that on, on the committee. Now, Time for some inductees. As I introduce them, um, this is not alphabetical. It's not, doesn't have anything to do with the number of votes they received. It's purely chronological, starting with the earliest one. And Dale, Dale and I will be working in tandem here. He's in the technology bit of since that's way above my pay grade, I'll just stand up here and yak a little bit. But, uh, he's, getting ready, he's getting ready to go. Our first inductee from the class of 1922. 
our first inductee in the Minneapolis Sports Hall of Fame class of 2015 is Elwood Tiny Feather. He graduated from Minneapolis High School in the class of 1922. He's being inducted for his participation in the sport of football. Not much is known from records about Elwood at MHS. But he played halfback and had the tiny nickname even then. His varsity teams at MHS went 14 and 13 from 1919 to 21. Elwin went on to Kansas State, where he led in three years from 1924 to 26. Those Aggies were 13, 9, and 2. He then played eight years in the newly formed NFL from 1927 to 34 for five teams at the fullback position. He played five seasons for the New York Giants and then one or partial year stints for the Cleveland Bulldogs, Detroit Wolverines, Staten Island Stapletons, and the Cincinnati Reds. Elwin played at six foot zero inches and 197 pounds in the NFL and was anything but tiny in those days. His NFL career statistics were 30 rushes for 50 yards and seven receptions for 79 yards, scoring 10 TDs. He obviously was mainly utilized for blocking at short yardage near the goal line. From 1945 to 65, Elwin was a tenant farmer in Northwest Kansas and Northeast Colorado. He died of a heart attack on July 15, 1965, aged 63, in Goodland, Kansas, while coaching in youth leagues. Elwin Feather is the only Minneapolis High School alumnus to ever play in the National Football League or any other professional sport to our knowledge. Here is a picture of him on a sports card in 1930 while with the New York Giants. And here are pictures of the 1920 and 1921 Minneapolis High School football team. Elwin Feather is pointed out in each of these pictures. As you can see, he was taller than a good share of the athletes on his quads. Thus the nickname Tiny. Another tidbit of uh, Tiny Feather. All five of the seasons that he played with the New York Giants, he played in the same backfield with a quarterback named Benny Friedman. Before Benny, the NFL ran the ball and ran the ball and then ran it some more. The forward pass was considered a desperation play. Benny kind of changed all that. He became the NFL's first great passer. In his five seasons that Tiny and Benny played together, Benny threw 56 touchdown passes and ran for 20 more. That got Benny into the NFL Hall of Fame. But he didn't do it on his own. Somebody was blocking for him. And one of those somebodies was Tiny Feather. We have no evidence that, that Tiny ever married or had children and being gone for 50 years, you can imagine the, the problems we had trying to track down a relative. But with the kind of people in Goodland who came up with some information, we were able to find a nephew in Wisconsin. And from, from there we found a, a niece in Idaho, and they both were planning to come here today. Um, in fact, uh, the nephew in Wisconsin, I spoke with four or five times since last summer. And he was overjoyed with the thought of, of making this trip and picking up this award for his uncle. 
Then about a week ago, a close family member came down with a very serious illness and he just did not figure he could afford to leave town. So, I will hold on to Tiny's plaque. And accept it in his behalf. I will be sure and ship this to the nephew. And Tiny's duplicate plaque will go up on the wall at the high school right along with everybody else's. Our second athlete being inducted into the inaugural Minneapolis Sports Hall of Fame class of 2015 is Bernsey Tex Hawker. Bernsey graduated from the Minneapolis High School class of 1927 and is being inducted for his participation in the sport of track and field. In the 1926 state track meet, Tex swept the 100 yard and the 220 yard dashes and the long jump events. In this era, all schools competed in just one class. In 1927, Tex was awarded a large silver trophy at the KU Relays as the outstanding athlete. At state that same year, he had an off day, finishing second in the 100 dash, third in the long jump, and either second or third in the 220 yard dash. Tex held the Minneapolis High School boys track records in two sprint events until they were retired in 1979 with the conversion to metric measurements. They were the 100 yard dash at the time of 10.0 and the 220 yard dash with a time of 21.6. A comparison of times utilizing a metric converter would show the 100 yard dash time of 10.0 being at the 100 meter time of 10.94. The current Minneapolis High School record of 100 meters is 10.55, which was set in 2002. 220-yard dash time of 21.6 in the 200 meters would be 21.47. The current MHS record for the 200 meters is 21.79, which was set in 2007. 88 years later, Tech still holds the Minneapolis High School record for the long jump event, 22 feet and 6 inches set in 1927. Tex Hawker served his country in World War II, then attended bar for many years in the small mountain town of Monte Vista, Colorado, where he died of natural causes at age 92. Tex donated his medals and trophies to the Otto County Museum in May 1977. And here is a picture of Tex as a student athlete at Minneapolis High School. Here are two team pictures, including Tex Hawker, the 1925 Minneapolis High School basketball team, and the 1925 Minneapolis High School track team. Are you sure that picture right there is, is right? This didn't work like it. See, that isn't me. Um, yeah, you can kind of visualize what the final field was for the 100 in 1926. Everybody in, running in the same class, there were no 2As, 3As, Class A, Class B, none of that stuff. Everybody ran against everybody. So you could visualize two guys from Wichita, two guys from Topeka, three guys from Kansas City, and Tex. And Tex being all.
we have been unable to determine if texts ever, well, no, that's not right. I'm thinking of the other one. Um, Tex did marry and had a couple of sons. We've tried to chase down leads to locate one of the sons, at least. But so far, everything comes up cold. So we'll keep looking. And when we find a relative, we will get him his plaque. So I'd like to ask Dale to come up and accept Texas plaque and hold on to it until we can find a relative. records hung in Hart Gymnasium for years and years, and of course that's 50 some years after he participated, close to it anyway. And I always thought I could have made one man ever run that fast, and hard anyone has since in Minneapolis High School, so quite the athlete. Thank you, Joe. I think what I need to do is, is ask my friend Eric Shoot right here about that long jump record. I can't believe he didn't uh, bust that one. Okay. Our third inductee into the inaugural class of the Minneapolis Sports Hall of Fame is Archie Happ McCain. A resident of Minneapolis is being inaugurated for his participation in the sport of baseball. Archie was raised on a farm east of Delphus in Logan Township in a large family with eight brothers and one sister. He attended a one-room schoolhouse through the eighth grade after which he farmed full-time with his family. He played baseball on the family touring team dubbed the McCain Nine, and with other area teams as a left-handed pitcher. In 1929, at the age of 18, he pitched against a minor league pro team and earned a tryout. In 1930-31, he was with a Pueblo, Colorado team in the Western League, winning 19 games in one season. In his opening game as a starter, he pitched against the future Major League legend, Dizzy Dean. He also struck out Babe Ruth in a spring training game. After another five years in the minors, in 1937, he finally made it to the big leagues with the Boston Red Sox. In 1940, he was traded to the Detroit Tigers, where he had a 5-0 record with a 2.82 ERA. Game four of the 1940 World Series, he pitched three innings in one run relief. He spent six plus seasons in the majors with 26 wins and 16 saves, primarily in a relief role. Archie bought a farm near Minneapolis with his World Series earnings and returned home to raise his sons. He lived in Minneapolis over half his life plus years, both farming and as a skilled Finnish carpenter. He took local teams to the National Baseball Congress tournaments in Wichita, where he continued to pitch. He coached his son's youth teams in Minneapolis. Archie passed away 30 years ago on May 21, 1985, at the age of 74. Archie Hap McCain is a member of the Kansas Baseball Hall of Fame, housed in Wichita. The softball field at the Ottawa County Fairgrounds, which is utilized by the Minneapolis High School girls softball team for home games, is named in his memory, McCain Field. And here are several pictures of Archie as a professional baseball athlete. One is the Boston Red Sox, and also as the Detroit Tiger. 
backside of a sports car that lists its professional statistics. And finally, a picture of McCain Field at the Ottawa County Fairgrounds in Minneapolis. Here today to accept Pat's induction is his oldest son, who is an old compadre of mine. We go way back. Besides sharing a, a first name, we were born four days apart. He was born in Boston, went half with the Red Sox. I was born in Kansas City. Somehow we ended up here, starting kindergarten together down the hallway. As teenagers, we were tailback, wingback, center, point guard, pitcher, catcher, went through all the teenage sporting wars together. He went on to Kansas State, got an engineering degree, worked in that field for a while, then flipped over and became a financial planner. He's now retired, living in the little apple of Manhattan. Mr. Jack McCain. Jack and the committee, I accept this award for my, for my dad with humble uh, appreciation and our entire uh, McCain family is stretched down this, this aisle here. One thing that I remember about dad was he, he really never uh, was a bragger on himself. To my brother Tom and I, he was just dad. Now, if you ask him about his basketball or baseball career, he would tell you, but, uh, but he really was uh, very humble. And a couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to, to go and attend the game in Fenway Park, Boston. And they were playing the Yankees, and so the place was, was full and noisy. And as I sat there, and I looked around, and, and Fenway Park, for you people that don't know, is pretty much the same park as when my dad was playing. So I sat there, and in my mind, I, I could see my dad out there. And it made my heart go bitter better. But I can't imagine how a guy out of the fields of Kansas with an eighth grade education went from playing with his eight brothers in a, in a pasture uh, uh, ball field to in front of thousands of people and pitching in the highlights of the city, how he remained humble. I think I would have been bragging and felt, you know, hey. But he was never that way and I always impress me. So I thank you and your committee for making him in this inductee crowd and I know he'd be extremely pleased. So thank you all. I remember half throwing batting practice to us. His Medium speed fastball was fairly easy to hit, but I could never hit a breaking ball to save my life. And he'd always end the session with a little hook that would just drive me nuts. He was, he was a baseball coach here, a junior legion, for years before I came along and for a lot of years after. Our fourth inductee into the inaugural Minneapolis Sports Hall of Fame class of 2015 is Major General Clayton Comfort. Clayton graduated from Minneapolis High School in the class of 1947. He 
is being inducted for his participation in the sport of football. Clayton was a big bruising lineman on the gridiron and an equally ferocious defender rebounder in basketball. He earned an engineering degree at KU in 1953, then spent 34 years in the U.S. Marine Corps as an aviator and a commander before retiring in 1987 as a major general. Clayton flew jet fighters and assorted attack aircraft. He received a master's degree in aerospace engineering in 1963 and later served two tours in Vietnam in 1967 and 1971. He was awarded the Distinguished Service Medal, two bronze stars, and two air medals amongst other decorations. He held various command positions during his service. Major General Comfort passed away on October 17, 2004 in Lawrence, Kansas and was interned in the Arlington National Cemetery. Clayton Comfort is shown here along with the Minneapolis High School 1945 football team. Minneapolis High School 1945-46 basketball team and with his 1945-46 junior class. Major General Clayton Comfort, United States Marine Corps. One thing I might add about the general, um, any officer in any branch of the service, the odds of making flag rank, in other words, general or admiral, are very slim unless you go to a service academy. Almost all your flag officers have been through their services academy. Once in a while, someone will break that, that rule I know Colin Powell did that, um, and General Comfort is another one. So it's, it's, it's very rare to, to even get that, particularly to get the second star without going to a service academy. Now we're going to fast forward about 12 years. Cancer 
after a short illness in 2003. Dr. John Matt. Here today to accept General Comfort's plaque is his wife of 50 some years, maybe 60. She lives in Lawrence, her name is Artis. And their son Lawrence and a cousin, Eileen. I believe they are here today. Artis, would you like to come up? I'm so sorry, I skipped right over you. And on behalf of the Hall of Fame, I'd like to award that plaque to you as Clayton's induction. Today, to accept Dr. John's induction, his younger brother, if he retired, kind of sitting a police officer. I think he said 34 years, and uh, still lives in Kansas City. A pretty good chalk in his own right, as I picked up going through my archives, and he may be standing up here someday on his own merit. Mr. Dan Matt. Thank you. 
And I'd like to recognize our, uh, Diane and her family here, her husband Chris, and her, her sons there, uh, JP, uh, Ryan, and Connor. Uh, Diane, when we notified her about John being chosen for this, she really wanted to come back. Uh, her sons never did get to meet their grandfather, but by coming back here, we've been doing a tour of Minneapolis today, showing Diane and, the, and her, her son there where John grew up at, and the way the town's put together, and the town still looks great. It looks just wonderful. And one of the nice things, about, uh, when we first came back here, I thought, we won't find anybody here on a John generation that remembers him. But just by hearing some of the names and all that, there are many people here, I'm sure, do remember when John played here. And of course, this write-up was great, but the one of the things about John was he had some, he participated in some famous KKU basketball games. And we always went to the games, of course. I remember the 1963 Big 8 tournament, uh, first place game against K-State. John had a terrific game, scored 20 some odd points, and he beat K-State in three overtimes. That was a big game. And you may remember when Missouri left the Big 12 and went to the SEC on TV, they, had, uh, they showed the Missouri KU fight game. 1962, and it was at Missouri, really heated. That kept the border war going to the date that it still goes on today. Uh, my thing about John, athletics was important, sure, but it was just a tool to get to where he wanted to be. And that was by his degree at KU, his master's and doctorate at Indiana, working in his line of work, uh, going from being a chemist uh, to getting them the management level at the different companies. They always said the thing about John, when he was in management at those chemical companies, he was one of the very few that could write a chemical formula on the whiteboard and understand it. <laughs> and also to John, the things that were important, okay, oh, your basketball, sports, career, his family, his, uh, his widow, uh, Renita Bethine Campus, class of 1959, his daughters Christine, Diane, and Susan, and the grandchildren. He was successful, he had a successful marriage. His children are successful, they have a successful marriage. He, he, he succeeded very well in the things that we all thought were important. And of course, we're missing very great. He's kind of been passing, passing away at an early age there.
Gatorade Regional Player of the Year, USA Today Top 25, All-State All-Class Top 11, Class 3A All-State, and named to the Kansas Shrine Bowl. Mark was credited with nearly 400 tackles on defense and was a pancake blocker on offense. At 6 foot 4 inches, 255 pounds, he certainly had the physical credentials. In basketball, he scored 642 points and pulled down 490 rebounds. Mark had 70 plus scholarship offers and chose Kansas University, where he led her from 1992 to 94. He started at the all-important offensive right tackle spot for the Jayhawks in 1993 and 94. Mark later was an assistant football coach for the Mid-American Nazarene football program. Mark is now Senior Vice President of Management for the Great American Insurance Group Crop Insurance Division in Cincinnati, Ohio. Mark Allison, number 75, for the Minneapolis High School Lions football team. Here are pictures of Mark on senior night in 1990, Kansas top 11 in 1990, as number 78 with the Kansas Jayhawks, and finally coaching. Mid-America Nazarene College. Next are videos of Mark at Minneapolis High School in the Kansas Shrine Bowl and at Kansas University.
today uh, for being inducted into the Hall of Fame. It's uh, quite an honor. Um, there's a lot of impressive individuals that uh, I knew maybe a little bit about, some I didn't know anything about, but uh, to learn their history, it's very impressive on what they've accomplished, not only in sports, but also in life. Uh, I want to say, you know, first of all, thanks to God for the ability to play the great sport of football. It's uh, done a lot in my life, and it's been a, a lot of learning throughout the years playing that sport, learning to play with other people, um, and just learning to uh, play a great team game. I also want to say uh, thanks to my family who are here, for Jill and the girls. Um, um, and Jill's a graduate of Minneapolis as well, went to the same uh, grade 1991, and uh, for them being here. For the girls being out of school, I know they hated to uh, miss school for a few days to come out here, but uh, it, uh, it's good that they're here. Um, I, I want to thank my mom and dad for their support over the years. Um, it's, been, it's been great. Um, also, for the coaches that I've had, for uh, Coach Max Heinrichs, um, he did a lot for me when I was in Minneapolis. And uh, uh, for getting my name out there, for them seventy schools to be interested in me. And um, also to uh, remember Jeff Giles, he was uh, coming as well about the same time as I got here. And unfortunately, uh, you know, he passed here recently, and uh, he was a, a great man and taught us a lot about the importance of weightlifting and competing hard. And uh, we do miss him. Um, also, the former teammates. You know, football is uh, the ultimate team sport. You don't win by one individual being good. You win as a team. And we had a lot of good players that worked hard, and uh, it was a it was a great experience uh, to work and uh, play with them um, throughout the years. But uh, this last week's been very interesting. Um, the clips that you saw are clips that I haven't seen in 20 plus years. We uh, dug through some boxes and found them and uh, started looking at them. I think the girls got tired of me saying, hey, come over here, let me show you something. And it's uh, like no big deal. But it was a lot of fun to uh, experience that. And some of those plays, I remember them just like they were here yesterday. And uh, it's been that long ago, and time does fly by. But it's been great. It's been great to experience it with them and talk about it, and with Jill as well, because her being here, us being high school sweethearts, um, you know, we got to watch the play this weekend where she starred in the play and did the, the lead role. And the girls kept asking, Dad, where's your five second clip? I want to see you come out in a little Abner play. Well, she was the lead and was in the whole thing, but it was great to do that. But Minneapolis is a special place. Um, you know, and that's another great thing for us is for her, for us to give, give the, um, uh, to tell our girls what great place this is and the experience that we had at Minneapolis High School here in the Minneapolis community. Um, there's uh, a lot of special things um, that's happened here, a lot of special people. And uh, we just want to um, thank you, Jack, for um, putting this on and for doing this for the committee and, uh, and uh, just for this opportunity to be here and to experience uh, this. Um, you know, and for the next generation, um, you know, just uh, hope that they um, will, um, you know, continue to uh, represent Minneapolis well. And uh, it'll be exciting to see who the next generation's um, coming here. And, uh, you know, it's a, a, an honor to be in this group. So thank you again. Thank you, Mark. You came a long way. And I'm sure you appreciate it. All right, fast forwarding again. One year. Our seventh inductee into the inaugural Minneapolis Sports Hall of Fame class 2015 is Linda Shea Smith. Linda graduated from Minneapolis High School with the class of 1992. She is being inducted for her participation in the sport of track and field. Linda is our first lady to be nominated and will be the last. Linda won 16 medals at state track meets over four years, of which 12 were individual. She won nine gold, six were individual, and five silver, four were individual. She won three golds in the 100 meter dash, one gold in the 200 meter dash, 
two in the 400 meter dash, two in the four by 100 meter relay, and one in the four by 400 meter relay. In her junior year at State, Linda beat record setting Tanya Jopp of Cheney in the 100 meter dash. Ms. Jopp had previously won 96 consecutive sprint races. Linda then beat Tanya again by five meters in the 400 meter dash, setting a new class 3A record time of 56.37 seconds, which still stands today. Linda also played volleyball and basketball at Minneapolis High School. Her career basketball stats include 289 points and 198 rebounds. She was a member of the 1992 team that finished third in the Class 3A tournament. Linda ran track at both Kansas State and Fort Hayes State Universities. She lettered in track at Kansas State in 1993. At the Big 8 Indoor that year, she ran 600 yards in just under 1 minute, 22 seconds. This is still today the seventh best all time in KSU history in that event. Linda teaches at Minneapolis High School and is the girls track coach. In this next slide are pictures of Linda at the Kansas State High School Activities Association they tracked these in 1991 and 1992, followed by video clips of her in several races at the same meets in 1991 and 1992. <laughs>
saw the statistics that this young lady put out. Uh, I was speechless. I mean, 16 medals in four years, and all those records. It's amazing. I, I wonder if she started in seventh grade going to state and winning medals. How could, you, how could you win that many in four years? I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Linda Shea Smith.
championship games and a third place game. In football, Ryan holds the Minneapolis High School record for the ball for second return for 95 yards. Scoring a TD versus Avalon in 2003. Ryan continued his basketball career at Arkansas State and Drake University from 2007 to 2011, where he scored another 1,500 points, starting all but one game in four seasons. He hit 312 each three-point field goals in his collegiate career. Ryan was named the Missouri Valley Conference Newcomer of the Year in 2009-10. Ryan currently lives in DeSoto, Kansas. He is the state manager for American Fidelity Insurance. Reggie Miller scored eight points in nine seconds during their playoff game to beat the Knicks. Well, Tuesday night, a Reggie-like performance by Ryan Weedle, senior at Minneapolis, Kansas High School. He scored 25 points in a span of two minutes and two seconds in the third quarter of a 26-point win. He's committed to Arkansas State. He was 16 of 25 from the floor, 9 to 15, three-pointers, 5 of 6 from the line, and moved to a school record 46 after the 25-point outburst. In a two-minute time frame, he played two and a half more minutes of the game. So he ended up with 46, 25 of those coming in two minutes.
a pretty good player named Oscar Robertson at an NCAA regional game in Allen Fieldhouse. Poor in a flurry of points. He scored 26, but it took him six minutes. 25 in two minutes is, is almost beyond belief. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ryan Wheel. Yeah, I think, like I would go like 